region of the Czech Republic. Beth El Synagogue Center Wallach Family Holocaust Rescue Torah, liberated from Theresienstadt. Chavarat Tikva Holocaust Rescue Torah from Brno, Czechoslovakia. Community Synagogue of Rye Holocaust Rescue Torah, Prague, Czechoslovakia. Congregation B'nai Israel Armonk Holocaust, Res Holocaust Rescue Torah from Pakov, Bohemia. Congregation Emmanuel of Westchester, Tabor, Czechoslovakia. Congregation Knesset Teferet Israel, KTI, Smichau, a section of Prague, Czechoslovakia. Congregation Kol Ami, Brno, Czechoslovakia. Congregation Shir Tikva of Westchester and Fairfield Counties, Torah number one, Brno, Czechoslovakia. Congregation Shir Shalom of Westchester and Fairfield Counties, Kromeritz in central Moravia, Czechoslovakia. Congregation Sons of Israel, Briarcliff Manor, German-speaking provinces of Czechoslovakia called the Sudetenland. Congregation Sulam Yaakov, Prague, Czechoslovakia. Greenberg Hebrew Center, Germany. Holocaust and Human Rights Education Center, Bohemia and Moravia, Czech Republic. Jewish Community Center of Harrison, unknown. Larchmont Temple Holocaust Rescue Torah, Moranska Bujevice, Czechoslovakia. Lafell School of Westchester, Torah number one, Bohemia or Moravia. And the Lafell School of Westchester Holocaust Rescue Torah number two, also unknown, found in Warsaw, Poland. Reform Temple, Putnam Valley, Kolin, Czechoslovakia. Scarsdale Synagogue, Mainz, Germany. Temple Beth Abraham, village of Malevsko. Temple Beth Elohim of Danbury, hamlet of, Pri of Prichice, Czechoslovakia. Temple Beth El of Northern Westchester, Boscovice, Germany. Temple Israel of New Rochelle, Prague, Czechoslovakia. Temple Israel of Northern Westchester, Osterlitz, Austrian Empire. Temple Shari Tefila, Klatovi, a small town about 90 minutes southwest of Prague. Temple Shalom, Czechoslovakia. Westchester Jewish Center, Berlin, Germany. Westchester Reform Temple, Jewish communities of Bohemia, Moravia, and Silesia. Thank you, Rabbi Groper. <clears throat> Over the ages, Jewish scholars have sought to understand God's design through the meaning of numbers. By analyzing numbers, they saw connections and patterns which they believe revealed hidden truths about the world. But how do we, as thoughtful human beings, take meaning from a cold set of numbers? Are they purely statistic, or do they mean so much more? Here today on Yom HaShoah, we are called upon to remember, honor, and learn an incomprehensible series of numbers. Numbers generated by the murderous actions of the perpetrators of the greatest crime in history. Numbers that represent a horrific attempt to wipe the Jewish people from the face of the earth. They are the numbers etched into the arms of those who passed through Auschwitz and are now emblazoned upon our hearts. They are the numbers of the one million murdered in Auschwitz and Birkenau. They are the numbers of the 925,000 killed in Treblinka and the 434,000 whose lives were taken in Belzec. They are the numbers of the six million, one quarter of whom one and a half million were children. They are the numbers we have vowed never to forget. Yet remembering is not enough. We must recognize that they were much more than mere numbers. They were each and every one a life to be cherished 
and now to be honored, not only by being remembered, but by influencing how we conduct our lives today. From this painful past, we must learn that life is a precious gift to be valued and preserved, that all people deserve to be treated with dignity and respect, that it is our duty to learn from the past so as to protect the future. We must now vow never to succumb to, be made, to being made numb by the numbers because the six million are so much more than a number. Our next speaker, Westchester County Executive George Latimer, is a longtime friend, both personally and to the Holocaust and Human Rights Education Center and the Westchester Jewish Council. George's support for our organizations has been both substantive and unwavering. Those of you who have heard George speak before know what to expect. For those of you who are first timers, look forward to hearing something special. George? This Garden of Remembrance is a place of reflection. We gather here every year, and in years past, as recently as a year ago, filling hundreds of us here in this plaza area. We were even here a second time last year to speak out against the desecration of this garden. Today, unfortunately, we have to be separated. We have to be separated in different places, but we still come together to remember the sacrifices that were made by all of the people that were so brutally murdered. We remember the evil to contemplate what was in the hearts of individuals that could do such a crime against humanity. And we remind ourselves that even though we're separated right now, with masks and with distance, we're still together. A friend of mine who's Jewish shared a quote with me that I'd like to read briefly. I believe in the sun, even when it's not shining. I believe in love, even when not feeling it. I believe in God, even when God is silent. These words came from an inscription that was found on the wall of a cellar alone, where Jews hid from the Nazis. We are apart this day, but we are together. We're together to remember and to never forget. This physical place is a place of remembrance. But we don't need the physical place. We just need to remember it in our hearts every day. Thank you, George. We now I'd like to welcome back Rabbi Groper to recite the Mourner's Kaddish. Thank you. And George, thank you for those beautiful words and reminding us of that incredible, incredibly important quote from Cologne, Germany that was valuable then and continues to be valuable to us today. Before Mourner's Kaddish, what is different about this Yom HaShoah? Everything and nothing. We are about as physically distant as we can be, yet we are incredibly close in our determination, in our resolve, with our memories, with each other. The names of those senselessly killed still cry out to us from the forests, from the fields, from the burial pits dug with their own hands, from the death camps, from the gas chambers, from the crematoria. The voices of the survivors still ring in our ears. Never again, never again, never again. Not for us, not for anyone else. Not here, not anywhere around the world. As a people, we have been here before separated, cut off, distanced. Yet unlike the Anne Franks and thousands like her, we can still move around. We can breathe fresh air. We can see the stars. We can go outside to look into the eyes of another. 
We might be anxious, but we need not be afraid. We can raise our voices, look with compassion and empathy, act with justice and love. And so, dear God, as we offer this special Kaddish, these words that sanctify and magnify your holy presence, we pray to remind ourselves that just as you were with all those, the dead and the living, in the cities and camps we now will name, embracing, loving, surrounding them with your care, lifting them up with an undying faith, you too are with us, encouraging us to stay home, to stay safe, helping us to overcome fear and anxiety, strengthening us to do mitzvot in your name, emboldening us to work for peace, justice, and equanimity. Here in the land where these freedoms are enshrined, in Israel, reshitz michat gulatenu, the dawn of our deliverance, in all lands. Amen. And so I invite you, if you're able, to wherever you find yourselves, if you're able to please rise. And as you do, just note perhaps where the camera uh, might be pointing. And so if you need to take a step back or two, please do so. Yitkadal Lodge, Beitkadash, Gurs, Shemeraba, Warsaw, Bealma Divrachirute, Bogdanovka. Vayamlich Malchute, Ravensbrook, Bachayechon of Yomechon, Vilna, Chaye de Hod Beit Israel, Treblinka, Baagala Urizman Kariv, Helmno, Vimru, Amen, Yehe Shme Rabam of Orach, Leolam Lome Almaya, Eat Barach Vishtabach, Belzak, Vit Baar Vitrumam, Buchenwald. Vit Nase, Vit Adar, Vit Ale, Vit Alal, Maidanak, Shmed Kucha, Brihu, Malthausen, Vela, Babirar, Niko, Birhata, Vishrata, Birgen Belsen, Tushbehata, Venehemata, Dachau, Damiran, Be Alma, Auschwitz, Vimru, Amen, Yehe, Shalama, Rabba, Min Shemaya. Chaim Alenu Vel Ko Israel Vimru Amen. Oh, se shalom bim Roma. Oh, ya se shalom Alenu. Ve al Ko Israel. Ve imru. Imru Amen. May the one who makes peace in the high heavens, let that same peace descend on us, on Israel, on all the world, as together we say, Amen. Thank you once again, Rabbi Groper. And now I'd like to introduce Cantor Schloss and Cantor Sugarman for a musical interlude. Good afternoon, everyone. We will be singing this musical setting of Ashrei Hagafrur, which was the last poem written by Hannah Senesch, herself killed in Europe as she was part of special forces fighting uh, against the Nazis. This poem, Ashrei Hagafrur, Blessed is the Match, with a musical setting by Cantor Lawrence Avery, also of blessed memory. Ashrei Hagafrur, Shenisra. Nisraf vehitzit lehavot Ashrei halevava shebara Shebara besitre levavot Ashrei halevavot sheyadu 
שיעדו, שיעדו לחדול בכבוד. אשרי הגפרור שנשרף, שנשרף והציץ להבות. Thank you, Cantors. Before turning things over to Lisa, I would like to thank her, Elliot Forsheimer, Pam Goldstein, and the rest of the Westchester Jewish Council staff for putting together today's program and for being such great partners over the years. I'd also like to thank Millie Jasper, Executive Director of the Holocaust and Human Rights Education Center, and the rest of our staff for their efforts today and their dedication to our mission. And now I'm pleased to introduce Lisa Roberts, President of the Westchester Jewish Council. Thank you. Good afternoon and thank you all again for being with us today. The Westchester Jewish Council is proud to serve as the central communicating, convening, and connecting organization for Westchester Jewry. Since 1975, we've worked closely with our now 135 member organizations, including synagogues and agencies, which in turn serve the Jewish community of Westchester of nearly 150,000 Jews. It is truly our honor to co-host this event with our dear friends at the Holocaust and Human Rights Education Center. We thank them along with our elected officials, so many who are with us today and all of our partners for their work on behalf of the community. This year marks the 75th anniversary of our liberation. Sadly, we must acknowledge that anti-Semitism is once again on the rise and that Jews are once again being scapegoated. As a community, we understand the importance of continuing to commemorate Yom HaShoah here in Westchester, even at these difficult times. And we are grateful for the technology that allows us to mark this solemn occasion virtually together. It is my privilege to introduce our guest speaker today. Peter Samoji is a member of the Holocaust and Human Rights Education Center Speakers Bureau. He was born in Pex, Hungary. And on July 9th, 1944, when he was 11 years old, he was deported to Auschwitz with his mother, sister, and twin brother, Thomas. Peter and Thomas were subjects of Dr. Joseph Mengele's experiments on twins. Today, Peter is a Westchester County resident, married to Anna, has two children and four grandchildren. He joins us today to share some of his story with us. about it and even today after many decades the some the wounds have not healed while it is still painful to tell this story it is unthinkable that it should not be told and with the years passing all the more urgent mm -hmm. 
my mom will have them, and I will be the youngest of three children born to an observant Jewish family in 1933. We lived in Page, Hungary. My father owned a prosperous business selling car, motorcycle, and bicycle parts. On September 1st, 1939, my brother and I began, began elementary school. On the same day, World War II started. My father was not particularly worried about our safety because our family had long been assimilated into the Hungarian culture. However, on March 1944, German troops invaded Hungary and our life changed rapidly. We had to start wearing the yellow star. My brother and I were even wearing the Jewish star on our Hungarian national uniform to take our school exams. Students in our class started to be fired and my father was soon taken away and unbeknown to us, ultimately sent to Dachau. Soon the rest of my family and I were forced out of our home in Hungary and deported, deported to, a hang, to a ghetto where we lived in Bonn, Germany. Later, we were taken away to a holding place that was formerly a horse sty. We had to sleep in the dirty stalls. On July 6, 1944, we were forced to walk to the train station where we were locked onto cattle cars, over 80 people in each car. After three days in a dark, windowless cattle car with little air to breathe, the doors opened and the air rushed in. There were dogs, guards with guns, and prisoners with striped uniforms. Get out! and leave everything behind, they shouted. In a daze, we stepped down from the boxcar onto the platform. A terrible smell hit me and I saw shoot, shooting flames from a chimney. My family reached for one of us and urgently tried to stay together in the swarm of people, the noise and the confusion. My mom told us if anyone asked, we should say we were nine years old, not 11. Maybe they will keep us together. The third time that Dr. Mengele asked for twins, my mother raised her hand and I said, I have twins. The qu guards quickly grabbed my brother and me. We were instantly separated from my mother and sister and never saw them again. I never even had the chance to say goodbye. The trauma of the family being torn apart still hangers, hangers with me today. We were taken to the barracks for the twins, where they tattooed the number A17454 on my arm. Our barrack contained three levels of wooden bunks and very crowded. We did not re receive much food. My brother and I were subjected to the twin experiment most of the time they took our blood and measured it. One, on one day, and other Nazi doctors selected the twins to be sent to the gas chambers. However, Dr. Mengele stopped the selection because he was not finished or, uh, with the experiments of Miller's bodies. On January 27, 1945, the Soviet army liberated Auschwitz and were finally free. While taken to Auschwitz took three days, getting back to my hometown almost three months, sometimes on foot, sometimes on open railroads, sometimes on bitter cold. cold. We were the only two children from my city who survived and returned home. This is a brief outline of my story. But how does one put to, into words the magnitude of such a loss. To this day, the question that haunts me is how was it possible? How was it possible to plan the gen genocide of this scale and implement this calculated plan across the, almost the entire European continent? Of course, it's not clear that much of the world knew about the persecution of the Jews. World leaders knew about Auschwitz, 
and other concentration camp, but the killing continued. This was not only a Jewish tragedy, it was a breakdown of Western civilization. We have learned from this tragedy that the teaching of hate and can make people believe that genocide, the killing of civilian population, including the children, is a patriotic duty. It makes me ask what it will take to make the future different from my past. It takes education about the lessons of the dangers of intolerance and the perils of indifference and inaction. This Holocaust memorial helps give us the voice to those who perished, not only to preserve their memory, but to educate the world about the tragic period in our history and make a better time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Peter, for those inspiring words, and we're honored to have you with us here today. I would like to just thank everyone for joining us again and express my hope that next year we will be able to commemorate Yom HaShoah together in person. Thank you again.